Today in Steve's Makerspace, we'll be reviewing the new logic gates and timer. We'll see some of what's possible with them. I'll show you my x-ray machine and a door lock that works by scanning an object in two dimensions. Basically, it's the key that opens the door. It's Steve's Makerspace. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Steve's Makerspace. I'm Steve, and today we've got timers and logic gates. Thanks a lot, Axelot. Okay, sorry. And um, I thought I would go over all of the logic gates, but Scrap Mechanist and Con Gaming did an excellent job going over all of the logic gates. And so I'm going to direct you to their videos. And I'm just going to focus on the AND gate and the NOR gate uh, because there's a lot of cool things you can do with those gates. Um, so let's get to it. Now to use the logic gates and the timer, you have to have beta enabled. So, so on the Steam app, right click on Scrap Mechanic at the very bottom, hit Properties, click on the Beta tab, and then in this drop down menu, you'll see Test. Now I don't show Test here because I already have it enabled. But select Test, start Scrap Mechanic, and you're ready to go. The first thing I want to note here is that these two blocks are lights. We can turn them on and off. We haven't had that in Scrap Mechanic. It's a simple thing, but it makes me happy. And you don't have to program it to just make a light turn on and off. You just plunk it down and attach a switch to it. Here's a floor lamp I made. Doesn't that look nice? Here's the timer. You can see that you can set the timer to uh, any number of seconds up to 59, and then the ticks, uh, partial, partial seconds. Uh, so you can go up to one full minute of a time delay and if you wanted uh, more time delay then you can just put these timers in sequence and get more time uh, delay. Here's where I tested all the various logic gates. For this video I'm just going to focus on the AND gate and the NOR gate. So the AND gate says that both A has to be true and B has to be true in order for the output to be true. Uh, or you can say A is on, B is on, and therefore the output is on. The logic gate only allows for two inputs, so if you want more than that, you're gonna to have to stack them. So a use for this might be if you were making an adventure game and you had to find four hidden buttons in order to open a door, this is how you could do it. If any one of these buttons is off, then the door closes. Let me show you my x-ray machine now. It's pretty simple. It just uses AND gates and scanners. Each scanner is attached to one AND gate, so when a scanner is activated on this side, the AND gate lights up on the other side. So if you've got a military base or an airport, you could put this in, uh, set up a security checkpoint, have people go through the x-ray machine. This is actually two walls of x-ray uh, machines stuck together. I've got the x-ray machine on Steam Workshop for you to download. Now let's look at the NOR gate. So if a is false and B is false, then the output is true. But if either A is true or B is true or both are true, then the output is false. If you just set up one switch with the NOR gate, then when the switch is on, the gate is off, and when the switch is off, the gate is on. When you combine a timer with an OR gate, you can get a looping strobe light effect. The scrap mechanist did some awesome things with lights. He made a disco floor and he put some lights on his airplane. It's really cool. I've got a link to his video in the description. When you start messing with some of the connections, you can get some pretty weird effects. I don't entirely understand what's going on here. I'm going to be uh, investigating this further. Something else you can do with uh, logic gates and timers, you can make doors that'll open up on both sides or have or set on timers to close after a few seconds. Here I'm using a little module put together by Con Gaming. It's on the Steam Workshop, control block with timer. So what you do is you set up a basic door, weld this contraption to your door, connect the buttons on both sides of the door to the blue logic gate, and here's the next one being connected. Then set the controller up to the bearing. Set the bearing to 90 degrees. 
and you're done. You can press this button on either side of the door and the door will open and then close automatically after a few seconds. You can reset the timer if you want it to close faster. As I said, I've got a link to Con Gaming in the description. I also want to quickly show you what Biosci DE did. He's got this cool light up sign. It's just awesome. I'll have a link to his channel as well in the description. Also, Diesel Designs just came out with a workshop creations video uh, that to show off some of the other creations made with timers and logic blocks. Another link, of course. I'm going a little crazy with the links today, I know. Now back to my own creations. Here is a combination door lock. You have to have certain switches on and certain switches off in order to get the door to open. The combo for this door is 2, 4, and 5 on. 1 and 3 have to be off. If any of that is incorrect, then the door will close. So let's go around the other side and see what's going on. The switches that have to be on are connected to AND gates, and the switches that have to be off are connected to a NOR gate. So you can see from right to left, 1 and 3 are NOR, and 2, 4, and 5 are connected to ANDs. Following that are just more AND gates. As you go down, the number of gates gets fewer. It's sort of like a tree that goes from branches down to the trunk. Eventually, you've got one AND gate that connects to the controller. This is, of course, showing everything reading true. We can turn off one of the buttons and you'll see what it looks like on the other side. And you can see that a switch that's turned off leads to a false AND gate and then another false AND gate and another false AND gate. Now I'll switch that back on and switch on one of the ones that is supposed to be off and you can see that the NOR gate is now false and so are the AND gates that uh, fall below that. It occurred to me after I did the x-ray machine and the combo lock that what if we combine those and have a certain shape that triggers the sensors that then goes through logic gates and opens the door. So here we go. The spaces with blocks are triggering the sensors, those are attached to AND gates. The spaces without blocks, no trigger, those are attached to NOR gates. So right now the door is open, but if I put a block here, the door closes. So this L shape is basically the key that opens the door. Put a block here, door closes. Take the block away, door opens. Put a block here, door closes. Take it away, door opens. You can see the six sensors are leading to four gates, which lead to two AND gates, which leads to one AND gate, which leads to the controller. So next I thought, well, how far can you take this? Can we go to another level of coolness or insanity, depending on what you think? <laughs> so this is also a scan lock, but it's in two dimensions. And you can see it's bigger. You get a different pattern coming from one side versus another side. And as I block some of the sensors, the door closes. This is the key, and of course if I move it, then the door closes. And if I put it back facing the wrong direction, the door does not open. So we'll replace it facing the correct way, and the door opens. So let's go through the doors, take a look at what we got back here. Same as before, NOR gates where there were spaces, um, the sensor didn't read anything, and AND gates where the sensors do read things. Then you basically cut the gates in half, and then cut them in half again, cut them in half again. Those are all AND gates. AND gates lead to this AND gate. And for the other wall, we've got the same thing going on, except of course that those initial NOR and AND gates are different since the shape is different coming from this direction. The final AND gate from that side leads to this AND gate, and that leads to the controller, and that opens the door. Now if I were to do this over again, that initial uh, set of NOR and AND gates, I would have uh, left a little alleyway where I could walk in so that I could uh, change these NOR and AND gates. As it is, it's pretty hard to uh, figure out what to change. Um, that's just a lot of connections. I did think about making this a 3D scanner with uh, scanners on the ceiling. Of course, that would give you yet another shape to work with. But I was pretty much ready to be done with this project. Now, if you wanted to, you could do more scanner walls. 
and change the detection length of these scanners. Then you could get an even more precise reading on this key object. I've got this on the workshop. It's called 2D Scan Lock. After you download it, you're going to want to weld it to the ground. It comes with the key in place, but with this extra red block, so you're going to want to delete this red block, and then the key will fall into place, and the door will open. Now before we go, I just want to show you a few seconds of some other things I'm doing on my channel. This is my Olympic Dancer. I've got a three minute video set to music, and this is available for download on the Steam Workshop. Most of my videos feature my robot helpers, Vinny and Norby. We talk about life and science and have a lot of fun together. I've got a video about how to make a custom sign in Scrap Mechanic. One where I use the Grego mod to make a ball and then show how to lighten the ball by changing a small bit of code. And finally I have a Rube Goldberg machine and a mousetrap chain reaction. So please check it out. That's all we got time for today. If you liked it, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to me. It would be an honor. And please tell your friends about me. And uh, thanks for coming by. I'll see you next time. Bye. Steve's Makerspace.